Hello there, my name is Path, and in this video we'll talk a bit about the basics of the quantum mechanical wave function. If you enjoy this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. In order to understand what a wave function represents, let's first imagine that we're studying a particle that is restricted to moving along a single direction and can only be found between these two points on this x-axis. The restrictions are just for simplicity, they're not necessary, because when we restrict the movement of the particle, the wave function becomes a bit easier to visualize and to understand. Now, in reality, the particle is somewhere in this region, but we don't yet know where it is. We need to make a measurement to find out where it is. Well, in quantum mechanics, we can actually calculate the probability of finding our particle in different regions before we actually make the measurement. And when we do make the measurement, the particle could be found in any of the regions that have some non-zero probability. But of course, it's more likely that the particle will be found in regions where the probability is higher. Now, once we make the measurement, we know where the particle is, at least at that instant in time. So we can ask the question, what was the point of all the probabilities? They have no real meaning when we're making one single measurement, because the particle could basically be found anywhere in this region. However, if we considered making the exact same measurement on identical copies of our system at exactly the same time, we would actually find the particles in all of these systems to be in different places, despite the systems originally being identical to each other in every way. This is remarkably different to classical physics, which is the physics that came before quantum mechanics. In classical physics, if we made a measurement on identical systems at exactly the same time, with the same measurement methods and so on, we would find all of the particles at the same positions. Because in classical physics, the act of making a measurement is just an act of gaining information about the system. The particle was somewhere, and we just found out where it is. Whereas in quantum mechanics, the act of making a measurement actually changes the system in some way. Or at least this is the case in the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, which is today the most popular interpretation around. More on that idea in this video up here. But here's the important thing. When we make a measurement on multiple identical systems at the same time with the same measurement technique, yada, 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 and keep everything else the same, we still get a distribution of measurement results. More particles are found in regions that, when we talked about probabilities earlier, had a higher probability, and fewer particles are found in regions with lower probability. Specifically, if this region, say, had a 12% chance of our particle being found there, then roughly 12% of all of the particles found at all would be in this region. And the more measurements we made, the closer we'd be to finding exactly 12% of particles in this region. And this is where we get a bit closer to the wave function. In our discussion so far, we split the line along which our particle could be found into distinct regions. Well, in reality, we can actually calculate the probability of finding our particle between any two points along our line. Or in other words, we have the ability to split up these regions however we want. How do we do this? Well, we can do this because we have access to a mathematical function known as the probability density function. For simplicity, let's say the probability density function for this system looks like this. We can take this function and calculate the area underneath it between two points on our line to calculate the probability of finding our particle between those two corresponding points. And we can do this for any two points that we want. That's why this function is called the probability density. It shows how probability is distributed through space in this case. And this probability density function is directly linked to what we call the system's wave function. Specifically, the probability density function is equal to the square modulus of the wave function. But hang on, if we square something, then won't it be positive anyway? Why do we need to take the modulus here? Well, that's because the wave function doesn't have to be real all the time. It can also be imaginary. And the square of an imaginary number is negative. But because probabilities can only be positive, this is why we have to take the square modulus. 
the implications of the wave function being possibly imaginary are interesting, and I'll discuss these in a future video, but I've also talked about them a little bit already in this video up here. Check it out if you're interested. Now, at this point, we can ask the question, why do we care about the wave function at all? After all, it's the probability distribution that tells us about how likely we are to find the particle at different positions along our line. So why bother with the wave function at all? Well, the probability distribution isn't enough to uniquely define our system. For example, imagine we have a system here with the wave function phi. Whatever phi is, it doesn't really matter to us right now. And we have another system with the wave function i phi, where i is the imaginary number, the square root of negative one. Remember, we said wave functions can be imaginary, so this is a valid wave function. Well, if we take the square modulus of these two wave functions, then we get the same thing, phi squared. This means that the probability distribution of both systems is exactly the same. But these systems are ever so slightly different to each other because they actually have different wave functions. But again, why should we care? After all, we can't directly measure the wave function. We can only measure the probability distribution. So how could we ever know that the wave functions of these two systems are different experimentally rather than just theoretically? Well, even though we cannot directly measure whether the wave function is real or imaginary, this phase, as it's known, does have important consequences in certain cases, such as the double slit experiment or the Aharonov-Bohm effect. I've made a whole video about this effect, so check it out up here or linked in the description below if you're interested. But the point is that we can, in some cases, measure appreciable differences due to the wave function being different, even if we don't directly measure the wave function of either system. And secondly, the wave function is important because this is the quantity that actually changes over time according to the Schrodinger equation. This equation is the main governing equation of quantum mechanics. Check out this video up here for a full overview of what it means. It basically accounts for the stuff making up the system in order to determine how the system will change over time. For example, it looks at all the kinetic energies and the potential energies in the system in order to tell us how the wave function of the system will change. Now, finally, it's important to note that we've discussed the wave function relating to the probability of finding a particle at a given position in space. But in reality, the wave function contains a lot more information than that. The full wave function can give us probabilities of finding the particle in a given spin state, or with a particular momentum, or a given energy state, or any measurement that we could make for that particle. And with all of that being said, this has been a very basic look at one representation of the wave function in quantum mechanics. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit the bell button for more fun physics content. Please check out my merch linked in the description below. It features a quantum dice design based on a famous quote from Albert Einstein. And finally, a huge thanks to all of my Giga patrons, as well as all of the others over on my Patreon page. That's also linked down below if you'd like to support me on there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.